Hitching up the buggy, churning lots of butter, raise the barn on Monday, soon I'll raise a nutter. This is a food video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Um, I am making raw butter this evening and this is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, you know it is a little extra effort but with a food processor it's actually pretty darn easy but I just love the flavor of it um, especially when you're using raw cream and some natural salt. Um, the flavor is just like no other butter you've ever tasted. It's just so rich and full and um, really adds flavor to your food like no other butter. Um, and the reason that it's like that is because I'm making it with raw milk, it is extremely nutritious. It's very dense with nutrients. I'll probably do another video on why we drink raw milk in the first place, but I'll just do a, a quick lowdown here. <laughs> because we get it from local farmers, it is extremely safe, um, and the state actually comes and tests them every few weeks to make sure that it is it is safe. And, um, and raw milk is chock full of natural probiotics and um, enzymes that um, when you pasteurize milk those things are completely destroyed especially when it's ultra pasteurized when it's regular pasteurized some of those things are retained um, but especially when it's ultra pasteurized I have found with my digestion and you can go back and look at my video on the type of diet that we eat and why we eat it but I have found that I can I cannot tolerate regular pasteurized milk but I can completely tolerate raw milk it's very interesting so that's another reason I make raw butter. The cows on the on the local farm that we get it from, they graze on green grass most of the year, and even during the winter they get uh, they are fed hay and very little grain, and so that also makes it extremely nutritious milk because the cows are eating what they're supposed to eat, and um, the fat molecules are much bigger and easier to digest and actually um, better for your system. So the other main reason to consume um, raw butter, and especially grass-fed butter if you can't get raw, is because it is chock full of the vitamins that we are really deficient in in our culture with the standard American diet. Um, those fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. You know, everybody's taking vitamin D supplements because everybody is so vitamin D deficient. Um, but you can get it in a much more natural form in very highly concentrated levels that your body can absorb really well um, from food, especially from foods like grass-fed butter. So that's the other reason that I really enjoy making butter. Um, and it's just kind of fun to do. It makes me feel like a pioneer. It's just kind of rewarding to, you know, just learn how people used to make things by hand. Hitching up the buggy, churning lots of butter. First of all, what I do is when we get raw milk, this is the kind of raw milk we get from a local farm, um, I let it sit for a day or so in the refrigerator and because it is completely unaltered, it's unpasteurized, not homogenized, the cream rises to the top. And so I just pour off the cream into a mason jar and I will do this for you know a few of the jugs of milk that we have until I have a full jar of cream and then once I have a full mason jar of cream um, it's ready to be made into butter so I use my Cuisinart um, food processor and it's a super 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 easy way to make butter um, so if you have one of these at home I mean it's like stupid easy because <laughs> all you do is pour it in and turn it on it's really that easy another way that you can do it is if you have a uh, 
a high powered blender like a Vitamix or like a Blendtec or a Ninja, that kind of blender. You can also make butter in that kind of blender as well. Or if you don't have either of those things, um, you can just do it the old fashioned way and use a handheld beater. Um, or you could use a KitchenAid as well. Any of those things will work to make butter. So you don't actually have to like churn it by hand. It's really easy. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to open up my food processor here. And the attachment that I'm using is like the bread kneading attachment. It's, the blade is not sharp. Um, it's blunt, so it's made for mixing rather than chopping. So I put that attachment in my Cuisinart. So with a food processor, it usually has a liquid fill line, which is like the maximum amount of liquid you want to put in there, otherwise um, it will spill out the top just because the little inside there is like an is open like an open hole at the top. So if it gets any higher than that, it will spill out. So um, you fill up the cream to that level. Right. And we put our lid on and it's so, so easy, you just turn it on. And there we go. It turns into whipped cream first. And hey, you could even stop there and make whipped cream if you want to. We've actually done that too and just added some vanilla stevia to it. And it's like sugar-free, really yummy whipped cream. Um, but when you're making butter, um, what you're waiting for is for it to be churned long enough so that the buttermilk separates out from the fat. And you can kind of tell when the sound of it changes and little bits of liquid start um, spraying up onto the top. And so it still hasn't done that yet, so you, can, you want it to keep going a little bit longer. Another thing I should add while we're waiting for it here is that um, you definitely want to start with refrigerated cold cream. Um, because the process of turning it in a food processor, or blender, or whatever, it will heat it up a little bit. And you definitely want, you know, you don't want the butter to melt, basically. You want it to stay solid. So that's why you definitely want to start with cold cream. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually starting to get pretty solid on the inside. And there's this spray up here, which means that the butter is beginning to separate from the buttermilk and the buttermilk is splashing up and that's how you know that it's just about done. As you can see, it looks pretty solid down here and it actually sounds different once the butter starts separating from the buttermilk. Um, you can start hearing the like splashing of the buttermilk in there and the sound changes. Um, once you've done it a few times, you start to recognize it. So this butter is just about done. I don't know if you can even hear on the video, but I just heard the sound change where, it, where you really start hearing that more liquidy sound of the buttermilk separating out. All right, so our butter is done churning, and this is what it looks like while it's still in there. And you can kind of see that the butter is floating um, on the top of the buttermilk. You can see the white liquid buttermilk, and there's the solid butter. So that's how you can definitely tell that it's done, that it's separated like that. So what we need to do next is actually separate the butter from the buttermilk. And the way we do that is this. What you're gonna need is a strainer and a little bowl. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to place the strainer over the bowl. And all you're going to do is pour the whole butter and buttermilk mixture into the strainer. And you can see that the buttermilk falls through the bottom and the butter stays on top. I just take the little mixer part out of the food processor, set that aside, and then I just use a spatula to get all the rest into the strainer. All right, so here we have the butter on top and most of the buttermilk here in the bowl below. And usually what I do is I just use the spatula to just kind of press it down a little bit to push a little bit more of that buttermilk down, get as much out in the strainer as possible.
All right, so I've strained out just about as much as I can just by pushing it against the strainer with the spatula. And then usually I take my wedding ring off for this process because it's a little bit messy. You want to wash your hands so that they're really clean. And then with your clean hands, you want to just scrape out all of the butter out of the strainer. You can even push it a little bit more with your hands. You can see the buttermilk coming out the bottom there. And I'll even use the spatula just to get as much off the edges as possible and into my hands. All right, so you can see our little ball of butter here. And then you want to just use your hands to just squeeze out any of the remaining buttermilk. What you couldn't get just by pushing it against the strainer. And then you want to salt your butter. So I like to use this real salt. It's um, like the natural sea salt and it's actually has a little bit of pink salt in it as well. So this is the really good stuff because it has all of the trace minerals that are really good for us as well. So this is actually another way to make our butter nutritious and that we're adding trace minerals. So I don't know, I usually add maybe about a half teaspoon or so. I usually just eyeball it. I just sprinkle a little bit and kind of mush it in. And I'll sprinkle just a little bit more. A little salt goes a long way. And I just use my hands to get that salt good and worked into the butter. One thing that I learned the hard way was that you don't want to put the salt in with the cream at the beginning. Because I found that the salt, um, I guess it gets into a little bit of chemistry here, but the salt binds with the uh, water molecules and separates out with the buttermilk. So then you're left with the butter with out salt and super salty buttermilk. <laughs> so um, you definitely want to add the salt last. So then what I do is I just kind of, it's not going to look perfect, I just kind of pat it into a little butter stick and it's not going to look nearly as beautiful as the nice little cubes that you see at the store. But that's what I do and then I stick it in my butter dish. And there you have it. Here's our butter. I usually will just go and stick this in the fridge just because it is a little bit warm and slightly melty just from all of the processing. Um, but then when it's ready, I take it out and leave it on the counter and we'll usually eat one of these sticks in about a week. Um, just putting it on toast and using it to cook with and everything. And let's not forget that we have our bowl full of buttermilk here. Now, this kind of buttermilk is not the kind of buttermilk that you get in the store. The kind of buttermilk that you buy in the carton in the store is not truly buttermilk. <laughs> they actually just um, add certain additives and whatnot to make it sour, but it's not naturally soured like buttermilk traditionally is. Buttermilk is traditionally a byproduct of butter, and so this is the real deal, guys. This is true buttermilk. And when it's raw, it's actually slightly cultured as well. So um, you can put it in your fridge um, for up to several weeks and um, it's actually still safe to eat because it has the good probiotics in it that um, keep it safe to eat. So I save this and I use this for cooking projects. So I have another little mason jar here. There's a little bit of buttermilk from my last butter project here. So I'll just add it to that. just pour it right on in. Have a little extra so I'll put it in another one. So there's our butter and our buttermilk and I often use the buttermilk to make traditional buttermilk pancakes um, and you can use it to ferment the dough a little bit overnight and breaks down the phytic acid in wheat and um, really makes yummy buttermilk pancakes or waffles or whatever you want to make. Um, you could also use it to make starters for various breads and whatnot. So um, raw buttermilk is very useful for many things. So let's give it the taste test. All right, we'll put a little bit of the butter on a piece of sprouted whole wheat toast. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, 
and it's really good you guys so there you have it guys that's how you make homemade raw butter I also wanted to just make a note that if you don't have access to raw milk um, or if that's just not a bridge you're willing to cross yet um, the next best thing to raw is having just plain pasteurized milk um, and you can often get that at most natural food stores they often come in glass bottles um, but they're not homogenized and they're low temperature pasteurized it just says pasteurized rather than ultra pasteurized and it still has a lot of the goodness in it so if you have access to that that's definitely the next best thing but if you don't have access to that then you can definitely just get organic they actually have organic I think organic valley has grass-fed milk now too so you can get that and still get a lot of the nutritional benefits from milk from grass-fed cows as well so there are lots of options for what's available in your area for making really nutritious butter so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and let me know if you try it below in the comments and tell me how it goes. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.